Hello, I'm Maggie Hamilton, the editor of Choir and Organ magazine. I've come today to The Strand in central London to meet our new music partners for 2023. Choir and Organ launched its new music series in 2006 to encourage young composers to write for choirs and for the organ as a solo instrument and also to encourage our readers to explore new compositions. Each year, we commission six young composers to write a short piece for choir or organ. We interview the composers in the magazine and the score is placed online for six months for free download. Since 2010, we have run the scheme in partnership with a different group of musicians each year. At a university or a cathedral, or an independent choir. Previous partners have included St John's College, Cambridge, the BBC Singers, St Paul's Cathedral, the National Youth Choir of Great Britain, and Voces 8. In 2023, our new music partners will be the choir of King's College, London, and I'm joined now by our new music editor, Matthew Power, who will tell us more about them. Over to you, Matthew. Thanks, Maggie. One of two founding colleges of the University of London in 1829, King's College had formed a chapel choir by the mid 19th century. A music faculty was established in 1964 by Thurston Dart, whose guiding principle was that performance should be combined with musicology in a way that it wasn't in other universities. Today, most musicians here receive regular tuition on their instrument or voice from the Royal Academy of Music. The Chapel Choir comprises 28 choral scholars trained by Director of Music Joseph Fort. They sing two services each week in term time and receive an annual stipend. Not all are reading music here and there is a vibrant mix of disciplines between them. They don't only sing chapel services though. The choir goes on tour each year, performing in music festivals, and it also releases regular acclaimed recordings. During 2023, our new music series will also be supported by PRS for Music, which will provide workshops and further opportunities for our composers. You can look forward to two solo organ pieces and four new additions to the choral repertoire during the year. Premier performances will be given by the Choir of King's College London or its organ scholar, and a video recording of each piece will be available alongside the score on Choir and Organ's website. The first of our new music composers in 2023 is Christina Arakelian. She's currently completing a PhD in composition here at King's College London, where she also teaches musical theory. Christina, the doctorate that you're currently pursuing is your third degree in musical composition. Can you tell us how you bring academic rigour to your writing while balancing it with free musical inspiration? Well, I think perhaps I've done too many degrees by now. I'm in the final stages of my PhD here at King's College London. Um, I think the most important thing when you are studying composition is to gain the knowledge of compositional techniques by studying styles, different styles, and writing pastiche music all the way from the Renaissance era to the 20th century to the 21st century. But then once you've done all of, those, uh, all of your studies and you've written lots and lots of composition etudes, um, I think then comes a time where you just need to forget about all the rules and allow your creativity to take flight. And for me, that's, that's the relationship, I would say, between the studies and the compositions that I'm writing. It's, so say. you're very much using those rules as tools to support the creative process? That's correct, but I'm not really thinking about the rules too much. So the rules are there somewhere uh, in, on my mind always, uh, but I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on um, the creative task at hand and how I'm going to craft it um, on the given day. And it sure. could take me in very different directions. Mm -hmm. Your setting of the Compline hymn, Te Lucis Ante Terminum, before the ending of the day, is both simple and profound. And I wonder if you could describe your harmonic language and how you approached setting that text. Mm. 
My harmonic language is mainly, I, I would say, quite modal, it has many modal inflections. And in this particular composition, uh, the game that I was playing harmonically was having a single note at the top of the texture, and underneath that note, the harmony keeps on changing. And I'm really fascinated by how, for example, a B flat uh, within an E flat major harmony will sound very different and be a different world to a B flat with a G flat major harmony underneath. And the list could go on, or you could change it to G minor, you could change it to a different combination of notes. And um, that was the compositional game that I was playing quite a lot uh, in this particular piece. And would you say that's more to do with producing different colours within the music? Absolutely, different colours within the music, but also within the text as well, because that's where it all stems from in choral compositions. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to hear some of those colours now because it's time for the first performance of Christina Arakelian's Te Lucis Ante Terminum. Christina, thank you very much. Thank you. The score of Te Lucis Ante Terminum by Christina Arakelian is available on the new music page of the Choir and Organ website now. 
We're delighted to be working with the Choir of King's College London during 2023. We hope you'll be inspired to perform the new music that is to come. And if you do, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs>